Hello and welcome to News Click and Communism Combat. Today we are going to discuss about the Sardar Sarovar Dam case and to discuss the issue we have with us, Supreme Court Advocate Sanjay Parikh. Welcome to our Thank you. program, sir. So, uh, you have been pursuing the Sardar Sarovar Dam case since 2002 and uh, now the final order has been passed. How do you see the journey? It's really a very, very, very long journey. Uh, nearly 15 years and uh, I remember that on each stage when any clearance was given we were coming to the court and asking the court really for rehabilitation of the people but for that purpose you must understand that Sardar Sarovar is an interstate project three states which are involved is the Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra Mostly people in Madhya Pradesh are going, are going to be affected. There was an award which was given, usually in interstate projects, award is being given. One important condition was that persons whose 25% or more than 25% land is going to be affected, they will be provided land-based rehabilitation, means land for land will be given to them. The land will be irrigable and cultivable land. If they are losing their houses, naturally house plot will be given. Then there will be rehabilitation site. For rehabilitation site, all the other facilities will be give, provided to them. Like, you know, if you uproot a village, then the rehabilitation site will be just like, you know, uh, the, uh, the facilities which are available in the village will be available in that particular place. Another important clause was as the height will increase, then people who are affected at a particular height will be rehabilitated paripasu. Paripasu will mean that simultaneously. Suppose the height is going up to 99 meter, then those who are affected up to 99 meter, they will be rehabilitated. Then 100 meter, 110 meter like that, it was happening. There was a judgment which was given in 2000. That was actually the main judgment which was given by three judge bench, by Supreme Court. That if the dam height is raised, then people will be rehabilitated simultaneously. They don't have to come to the court again and again. There were a number of other things. One very important condition was that the, the resettlement and rehabilitation of the people will be on better of principle because they said the rehabilitation is a component of Article 21, life itself under Article 21 of the Constitution. So better of principle will mean that if they are shifted from the village, then the new pl place will have more uh, amenities and facilities for them. And naturally, the, when the land is provided, irrigation facilities will be given to them. All those, you know, were, were, it was a part of award. And the court directed that the conditions of the award are like a decree and they will be executed like a decree. There won't be any change in it. Now, even after the judgment was given, then 2002, some affected people came and said, in spite of the judgment, we have not been rehabilitated. Then clearance was given to raise the dam height up to 110 then thereafter again it was raised. So each stage, the persons who were affected because of the increase in dam height were moving applications before the court. So they were saying that look at it, we have been affected and according to the award, we should be rehabilitated. These applications are pending but then there was no stay which was granted by the Supreme Court. Therefore, the dam height reached up to the 138.68 is the final height where you have to put the gates etc. The gates have been put now. Finally, if the gates are down, then the submergence will take place. That is the situation of Sadar Sarwar. In this scenario, when it was pending nearly for 10 years or 12 years, these applications, the entire thing is 15 years as I said, the, the Supreme Court has now given a final verdict that people who are entitled for land will be given 60 lakhs. Persons who had taken uh, were duped actually in some kind of a deal which was investigated by Jha Commission. To them, the, the court said that uh, they will be given 15 lakhs minus whatever they have taken. So this is how it has happened that the entire uh, award was actually land based rehabilitation but people have been given 60 lakhs and 15 lakhs. There is a further direction that after taking the money they have to vacate by 31st of July. Uh, and. Uh, there is also that some force will be applied, you know, for their eviction. What are the major issues in the Sardar Sarovar Dam case? Whether the rehabilitation and resettlement of the affected people 
have actually been done. What should have been done by the Supreme Court was to rehabilitate the people as and when they were affected. Now people you know who came 10 years back and said that we are affected, we should be given land, we should be given house plots. All those people, all these years were waiting. There was another judgment which was given in 2005 that once the rehabilitation is done completely, means the house plots have been provided, amenities and facilities have been given, rehabilitation is over, six months time for the purpose of shifting from their villages or from their house to that particular place. This is actually what was conceived in the award. This is what the 2000 judgment said, which was repeated in 2005 judgment. In the entire process of development, you are saying that no, it will be generational laxity, some irrigation facilities will be provided. Now it is at the cost of whom? These people are losing their lands. These people are lo uh, losing actually their uh, livelihoods. Displacement, the entire displacement not only of, of uh, a particular house but the entire village as such. So in this kind of a scenario, you talk about the protection of rights of the people who are ultimately going to be affected because development cannot be only for one purpose. Development ultimately must have a human face and people who are affected, they should be rehabilitated. Now the entire argument you know for 15 years that these people are asking for their rights. Not that they, they are saying that no this is what they want but they were saying this is what has been given to us by way of award, this is what has been given by way of 2000 judgment, this is what has been given by way of 2005 judgment. So on the, on the ground the situation which ought to have been, which was conceived actually when the 1979 award was given, when it was thought of when 2000 judgment was given or 2005 judgment was given has not been fulfilled on ground. You recently visited some of the villages in Madhya Pradesh. So, what did you notice there? How people are uh, reacting to the judgment? So, when I reached there, it was nearly 11.30, 12 o'clock and I went to a particular village. And you will be surprised that women, children, lots of people they were waiting. There were nearly about 300, 400 people who were there. So, I asked, you know, one girl, I think must be 9 or 10 years old. I said, why you are sitting? For what purpose? And uh, see, look at it, the awareness. She said, we are here because 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 we are here So this was at 12 o'clock in the night. Then I went to other villages. But everywhere I found that people were eager to know that what will happen after 31st of July. And I found that those villages are centuries old. Means they are very, very old villages because near Narvada, you know, you can understand the uh, civilization must have developed. Now there is a big question mark. Wherever I went, this question was put that it's all right, the benefit has been given to some people. But what about the other others who were eking their livelihood from this particular place? So probably what is being envisaged is that you take 60 lakhs and then immediately shift. So uh, the time period for purchasing land when they will go and start cultivating which was provided actually 6 months is not there. Now I saw some of the rehabilitation sites. There is nothing which is, which is available there in, that, in terms of that a person can shift and start living there. They must have a, a, a plot then the construction has to be made. Then thereafter there should be other facilities like medical facilities, there should be schools, there are other things. So if they shift now, the question is which is the place which will provide them the same kind of a safety, security, convenience as they are having in the village. And there are one, 144 villages and one township. It will be a big kind of uh, human uh, misery and uh, human suffering besides the uh, you know, uh, losing the place where they were living, but you know, the cultural thing is there, the entire historical background is there, their emotional attachment, everything is vanishing in, in uh, this time. So, sir, what are your general impression about rehabilitation and resettlement, whether the people who are affected really get justice? Now, the other case which I did was Tehri, you know, Tehri Dam, when the... So, I happened to uh, visit that... Um, Tehri town. Uh, only few days were left actually before the submergence was to take place. There were only 10, 10 or 12 people 
including men and women and the entire city was looking like a ghost town with candlelight you know they were walking in the streets that's that's what they were doing at the end because everybody had, had virtually walked out of this and after few months when i went there the entire thing you know terry town was not there so this is one thing which i saw it's all right there new terry town there is some kind of construction which has been done people have their problems still actually i am fighting that case now that is entering into probably 20 years or something people are still not rehabilitated because of filling of water in the in the reservoir terry reservoir the uh, the further displacement is taking place in that region that issue is pending it was pending in supreme court now supreme court transferred it to the high court now it is pending in uttarakhand high court similarly in sardar sarovar had gone to a tribal place for holi so i saw you know how uh, uh, we all of us you know played holi and then the tribals from different parts they, they had come with their musical instruments and they were dancing and all and again same thing happened same place when i visited again i found that it has been completely submerged the most important thing is that in a welfare state when you are talking of development you do your development but i think it is duty of the state it is duty of the courts ultimately to see that development should not be at the cost of human suffering this is what i have been experiencing in all these cases for the last you can say 30 years or so uh, not only these two but then i can narrate number of other cases but ultimately in the development process human beings suffer and particularly the poor and downtrodden or tribals it is possible to remedy this situation if there is some compassion shown because ultimately when you talk of law law alone is not sufficient law along with compassion for these people and that's what actually the entire constitution says that's what number of judgments also pronounce but somehow you know those things are missed at a particular point of time thank you so much for talking to us this is all the time we have for today keep watching us and thank you so much